level. So I think Pettis, we want to keep it standing, use his kicks. I mean, you know, get back to that, that Showtime hype that he had, you know, when he was champion. Um, can he do it? I mean, this. Then you're looking at one and five in your last six fights. I mean, you know, you, UFC may, you know, you, you may have to update your resume and look to another organization. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that, that's, that's going to be a tough one there. Um, I definitely, definitely think that's going to be a fight to see. And who knows? Jim Miller may prove me wrong. He may not actually be a trucker. He may be <laughs> a legit. <laughs> he's 28 well, 9, so he's got a lot of experience. So. Jim Miller's he not like he his, just walked in. <laughs> he runs his own school. He he has his own oh, wow. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu school. So he he teaches it, but he also he does it. He lives it. Yeah, that's 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 the real deal right there. All right, so going through the main card, let's go through and do a prediction here. So obviously Amanda Nunez, uh Valentina is not gonna happen. Uh so oh. we'll start off with Yoel Romero and Robert Whitaker. I'm going with Robert Whitaker to win the fight. I, I think he's going to do basically what he did kind of to Jacare from a similar standpoint. He was very aware of everything that Jacare was doing when he got him to the ground. And he knows that Yoel Romero is going to try and get this fight to the ground. But sometimes Romero likes to stand up and just throw hands, and that would be a big mistake. I'm, I'm picking Robert Whitaker. I, I think he's young. He's hungry. 26 years old and his striking is absolutely ridiculous um i'm picking robert whitaker to be the interim middleweight champion all right all right i agree with you on that one i'll, I'll put my stamp on that one uh so next up daniel versus uh blades aka razor curtis blades um what's yep. your prediction on this one I, I got curtis winning this by knockout and i don't think it gets out of the first round <laughs> <laughs> wow Okay. Just, I, <laughs> I mean, I, a, a guy who's got eight fights has not won any by submission at all. Uh, that, that that's 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 an amazing stat that I'm sure it's rare that you don't see often. But yeah, I I think I'm gonna go with Daniel on this one. I think he with his with his abilities. I think if he can somehow get blades on the ground. I think that'll be, of course, his biggest thing that he needs to try to accomplish. And yeah. he looks like he—he he looks like he'll be able to do it. Um, he doesn't doesn't have as much weight. He's actually smaller, but who knows? He may be a little bit faster and quicker to be able to get uh, Razor on the ground. So I'm gonna go with Daniel on that one. All right. Uh, so next up, we're Doom versus Overeem Part Three. So they're one and one. Uh, who's your prediction on this one? Boy, this one, I, I could almost flip a coin yeah. and, and go either way on this one. Looking at their last couple of fights, I like the way that Fabricio has looked over Overeem. I I know that fight with Stipe was not a good look for Overeem because he seemed like he was doing a lot more backpedaling than actual fighting. And, of course, it had some really great memes that came out after that fight of him running away and everything. <laughs> right, but... Right, right. I, I mean, I take him seriously, and absolutely, he is 100% legit and can win. Um, Verdun is not the striker that he is. He has really good Muay Thai, but his bread and butter is Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and which is how he beat Overeem when they fought earlier um, by submission. So I, that's what he wants to do, and I think that he will get it. Um, I'm picking, picking Verdun to win the fight and get the rematch with Stipe. Okay. All right. Um, and I'm going to agree with you on that. I think, honestly, I think at some point in time, the amount of fights that you have is going to yeah. catch up to you. And I think yes. Overeem is is getting to that point if he's not already at that point. And mm -hmm. uh, Werdum doesn't have as, as many as many fights. So that means not a lot of wear and tear, probably not of scar tissue. Um, he is 39, so that that's probably a disadvantage to him. But I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with Redoom here. Then these are two older guys um, with Overing 37. So I think uh, Redoom is is gonna get the win and he'll get that that uh, next matchup against Stipe. So that's my thoughts there. Yeah, oh, yeah. Overing's been through some wars over the years. So yeah. yeah, at some point the brain just you know. <laughs> <laughs> 
it, <laughs> after a while, it, it, it's, it's too scrambled up there, for sure. And that, that happens at, at some point in time. All right, so next and the last one in the main card, Anthony Pettis versus Jim Miller. What's your prediction on this one? Oh, man, I, I would love to see Pettis get back into the win column upon his return and stop that losing skid that he's been on. I can't pick it. Jim Miller's won three of his last four. And I just his fighting style is it's just a bad matchup for, for Anthony Pettis. I, I think Jim Miller's going to win the fight. I think he's going to get him to the ground. But even if it stands, Jim Miller's boxing is way. I mean, it, it's it's above average. He has he has decent MMA boxing, so he can throw hands with Pettis. But ultimately, he wants to fight on the ground, and he's the thicker of the two. When you see them, you can see. I mean, Pettis is a. He's kind of a slender 155, and Jim Miller's more of a he, – he's a filled-out 155, if you will. So I'm, I'm going to pick Jim Miller to win that fight. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to agree with you. As much as I've ragged on Jim Miller's photo, I'm actually going to agree <laughs> with you <laughs> on that one. Um, I, think, I think Showtime Pettis is – that Showtime is starting to fall off. And I think Jim Miller is probably, of course, looking to get into the next – kind of realm or, or of his career and hopefully get a, a, a title shot sometime soon so i think he's yep. going to be extremely focused in this one and uh, ready to take care of business um we always have an interactive chat room here on the bs3 sports show so i want to give a shout out to a couple of people in the chat room we've got mocha bella also we've got dj nunu we've got uh, uh who else do we have here we got Raw Talk online, and uh, no main event. Nunez is, is out. Uh, he definitely ah. put that in there. So that was definitely, we definitely got that news. So appreciate the newcomers in. DJ Nunu just ended her show. You can always check out her show on Spreaker.com. Search DJ Nunu, N U N U. Also, a whole other level podcast, which is uh, what Frank uh, Maze is a part of. Always check out that podcast. It's on. Spreaker also whole nother level and it's not spelled like whole nother level. Uh, I'm gonna break <laughs> it down for you here. Yep. It's uh H O L three and then another which is N U T H A and then level L three seven three L. Now you can also get the website, which is that is that uh HNL three, is that right? Dot com. Yes. Okay. Alright, so before I let you go, what is the fight in the prelims that the listeners should be looking out for the fight that interests me the most it may not be the most entertaining fight but it it intrigues me for maybe all the wrong reasons but it it's the main on the prelim card travis brown and olenic um travis brown has lost five of his last seven yeah i mean he, he's two and five i mean being Ronda Rousey's boyfriend will only keep you in the UFC for so, so long. long. I mean, <laughs> I mean exactly. at, at some point you got to win, and but he can, and that's what's so frustrating. He's beat Alistair Overeem. He's beat Josh Barnett. Like he used to came when he came in as a heavyweight. He used to move around and fight like Dominic Cruz does, but as a heavyweight, like he would dart in, jump back, and move, and everybody was like, "Oh wow!" And then he left. And he went to Ronda Rousey's coach, good old Edmund, who just ruined whatever it was that he learned at Greg Jackson's camp. He, he basically just ruined all that. So I want to see, because he's left that camp, how he, I want to see how he looks and how he comes out because he's fighting. Olenek has 51 fights. Actually, he has 61 fights. He's 51 and 10, and his nickname is the Boa Constrictor. So you know exactly what he wants to do yeah. in this fight. Get it to the ground and just, you know, choke you out. But I think Travis Brown, is he's the better stand-up fighter. I mean, that's going to be, he wants this fight on his feet, and Olenek wants this fight on the ground. So it's just going to be a matter of who can impose their will. I'm picking Travis Brown to win because I think a new camp, you know, gets some new perspectives and some new coaches in his head that say, hey, you know, you were a good fighter at one point, still are. I mean, he's not a bum, but, you know, you go two and five, and he's lost to some guys that you're like, really? Just head scratchers. So 
I'm excited to see how Travis Brown looks in that fight. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, so uh, I was going to say Olenek, who's 51-10-1. So this guy's got a lot of tread on, on these tires. You can almost mm-hmm. compare it to him to Overeem as far as mm-hmm. his experience. And I believe he is, let me check his age again, he's 40. That's 40 years old. He looks, he, he looks like he will... Uh, like he will choke you out. I mean, he, he yeah. he's, he's one of those Russian guys that like look like he used to be in the mob and decided to change over to MMA <laughs> instead of instead of being in the mob. But here's what I wanted to point out here real quick: submissions mm-hmm. 76 for the bow constrictor. Travis Brownie, as far as KO 78. So that right there, you're right. It's gonna come down to one of those two things: who is gonna be able to get. The person on the ground is they either by KO or either by submission. And mm-hmm. I agree. Travis Brownie, he he definitely has not been the same. I, it was a couple of fights ago, I don't remember which one, where he convincingly beat uh, someone. I, I don't remember who it was, but it was a fight I watched. I guess it must have been. Uh, let me see. Was that Metreon? Looks like the last fight that he won. Um, not me. Yep, yep, yep. Fight fight night. So. Um, that was a fight that he KO'd the guy in the third round. And when I seen that fight, I was like, this guy's a real deal. But over the past three fights, he's lost all three. And yep. this is a this is a break or make type of fight right here for him. And if he does not win this, I think it's yep. all downhill from from here. Yeah, he, he needs to get back into the win column and kind of get his career heading in a different direction. I mean, and a Linux not a he's not a bum. I mean, he has a Sambo background and Sambo is one of the best martial arts for getting into MMA because you, you pretty much know how to do a little bit of everything, and you're training with big Russian dudes all the time too. So you know. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that definitely. That, that's probably the toughest. I mean, the toughest people you can probably train with uh, for sure. Yeah. Um, so Frank, so thankful for you coming on the show once again. Frank of the Whole Another Level podcast. That's uh, HNL three. Uh, dot com and make sure you go check out the podcast it's on Spreaker um, whole another level also there uh, on Raw Talk Radio and actually we got L Bushman who's in the chat room he's uh, typing in for Raw Talk online radio so go check them out great group of guys appreciate you Frank uh, thank you so ben, much thank for you for having on. me definitely definitely we gotta, we gotta do this it. again we gotta do this again so I appreciate you absolutely thank you alright take care all right, see you. All right. All right, everybody. Thank you to all the newcomers in the chat room. Appreciate you guys. You got, uh, like I said, Mocha, Nunu, um, L. Bushman. So appreciate you guys so much. All right, so we're going to take a break. Right after that, we're going to talk about the local teams. So we're going to talk about the Mavs, talk about the Rangers. Not really that much to talk about the Cowboys. That's at least positive. So I'm not going to get into that. But we'll definitely talk about some Mavs and Rangers here shortly. Stay tuned. Are you looking for an honest car guy? Somebody that's going to shoot it straight, give you the honest answers, and give you the best deal on the car of your dreams check out Sean Nantanetti internet sales manager at Jerry Durant Toyota Texas call or text him at 817-231-3696 or visit his website at goshanauto.com he'll give you a great deal on the car of your dreams Even if you're not in Texas, he can still give you a deal on a car. Check him out right now. Sean Nantanetti. Go SeanAuto.com. DFW listeners, are you looking to buy, sell, rent, or invest in a home? KC Real Estate is here for you. She services Collin, Dallas, and Denton counties. She loves first-time buyers and is never too busy for referrals. Contact Kay 
via phone at 214-641-3140 or by email at kayc.